Agora TV. The world is thinking. If I needed a logo for my research group, I'd choose this, an Ouroboros. This image depicts rather nicely the interconnectedness of the microworld on the left and the cosmos on the right. The inner space of atoms and the outer space of the universe. And there are links between small and large, left and right. Our everyday world of life and mountains is determined by atoms and the chemistry. Higher up in the picture, there's another link, because stars on the right, halfway up, are powered by nuclear physics. Nuclei halfway up on the left. And higher up in the picture still, there's another link, which I haven't had time to address, because galaxies are seemingly held together, not just by the gravity of what you see, but by a swarm of subnuclear particles that make up the dark matter. So there's a link between subnuclear particles up on the left and galaxies up there on the right. The left-hand side is the domain of the quantum. On the right-hand side, Einstein's theory holds sway. Now, general relativity, Einstein's theory, and quantum theory are the two great pillars of 20th century physics. But they haven't yet been meshed together into a single unified theory. In most contexts, this doesn't matter. It doesn't impede us because their domains of relevance don't overlap. Astronomers can ignore quantum fuzziness when they're thinking about the orbits of a planet. On the other hand, chemists could ignore the gravitational pull between the individual atoms in a molecule because it's nearly 40 powers of 10 weaker than the electrical forces between those atoms. But at the very beginning of the universe, everything was squeezed so small that quantum fluctuations could, as it were, shake the entire universe. And so to confront the overwhelming mystery of what banged and why it banged, we need a unified theory of cosmos and microworld, symbolized, as it were, gastronomically at the top of this diagram here. <laughs> and uh, to put this on a firm footing, we will need to understand uh, the very large and the very small and how they link together. But before I leave this picture, I should mention that apart from the very large and the very small, there's a third frontier, the very complex. And we ourselves are the most complex things we know about in the universe, and we are midway between atoms and stars. We're large enough compared to atoms to have layer upon layer of intricate structure, but not so large that we are crushed by our planet's gravity. To understand ourselves, we must understand the atoms we're made of, and we must understand the stars that made those atoms. We are, in a rather precise sense, halfway between atoms and stars. The geometric mean of the mass of a proton and the mass of the sun is about 50 kilograms, within a factor of two of the mass of each person here. So it takes as many human bodies to make up the sun as there are atoms in each of us. Stars are simple just like atoms are simple. Stars are simple because they're so big and hot that their content is broken down into simple atoms. There's no complex chemistry inside a star. And they don't match the intricate structure of even an insect, let alone the human brain. 